Thank you so much. 16 pounds in California now have come in with local options to reduce or roll back. And you can't, you, you can't cultivate, grow marijuana in the state. So we're seeing uh, some kind of counties out in Cuyahoga County uh, where uh, uh, Measure B took effect uh, last year with the populace out there uh, voted to go from 25 to 6. As I said in my testimony, I wish it was to zero, uh, but it's the more uh, unnecessary arrests and convictions that uh, disrupt, uh, disrupt their lives uh, permanently. Um, even as we debate this issue today, people are losing their lives because of the unintended uh, consequences that arise from the intersection of the underground drug trade and the basic concepts of supply and demand. The, the way we handle drugs in this country has made us, responsible, made us responsible for the situation in Juarez, Mexico, which is now more dangerous than either Baghdad or the Um And countless other cities along the Mexican border are in the same situation now. Uh, We've even seen uh, Juarez's sister city, El Paso, Texas, pass a resolution asking for the same debate we're having here today on a much broader scale. Uh, many people will come and claim that the prohibitions of marijuana and alcohol are different, yet the results of violence and creation of an out-of-control black market funneling billions to criminals are identical. Uh, the negative consequences of these policies dealing with marijuana are slowly being scaled back as we now Last year, we passed question two in the state with more votes than Barack Obama. Uh, when we did that, we saved the financial aid of thousands of Massachusetts residents who otherwise would have lost their chances of education due to the Higher Education Act drug provision. Still many, still many young people, though, who are entering the revolving door of our criminal justice system are doing so via, via a marijuana arrest. Uh, keeping thousands of people out of, this, out of our system is a benefit in itself to the way our courts operate. Uh, this is why uh, we eventually need to handle offenders under the age of 21 with, uh, with more program-oriented uh, issues. Uh, the way we handle offenders under the age of 21 needs to be more program-oriented and not probation-oriented. There is little benefit to the rest of society by scarring an 18-year-old's permanent record. Therefore, therefore, creating effective court programs and prevention education through the tax revenue must be part of the discussion. Uh, in closing, I would just like to again thank the members of the committee for their time, and I urge you to keep an open mind during this discussion. We are all concerned about the effects that drug, drugs have on our society. So it's important to have an honest and rational discussion about the possible alternatives to prohibition. I am more than happy to address any questions you may have at this time. Thank you for your testimony and for coming very close to that. <laughs> Um, any questions? Thank you. Uh, Brian Bergeron. The chair and all I, I thought it was a, a much favor, much more favorable hearing than I anticipated. Uh, our experience in Leicester has the same thing. When we go to these state legislatures, a lot of times they're hostile, and a lot of times they'll they'll make you show up at nine o'clock and they'll call every single witness in the room and deal with every other bill, and then they'll break for lunch, and then you come back and at three or four o'clock they'll bring you on for three minutes when there's nobody left in the room and no legislators. Uh, they actually seemed interested in this. Uh, I thought it was. The hearing was very well managed. I thought they were respectful. The questions, uh, at least certainly that I got, I thought were reasonable questions. Um, I think Massachusetts, when they saw 65% of the voters in this state wanted to stop arresting smokers, the obvious question comes up then, okay, where are they going to get their marijuana and should we be controlling it? Should we allow a black market to exist or should we get rid of that crime and corruption and violence? So I suspect there's a good bit of support maybe at the Massachusetts legislature. I'm not foolish enough to think they're going to pass this bill and by the end of the session we're going to have legalized marijuana in Massachusetts. But I do say, I bet you within five years you will have it, as I think California will and probably Oregon and Washington. Uh, we're very close to a tipping point in this country and it's not a time for our people to give up. It's a time to get aggressive and speak out. What do you think is going to happen next year in California, the initiative? Well, uh, I, I think at least one of the initiatives, there are three or four legalization initiatives being debated and discussed out there right now. At least one of them is, is almost certainly going to make the ballot, and I think it'll pass. There was recently a field poll that showed 56% of the voters in the state of California favor a legalized, regulate, and tax bill. 
um, we'll lose a few points during the course of the debate. I'd like to see that 56 get up to 58 or 60, but I think we might win it. If we start with 56% and we run a professional campaign, uh, I think we'll have legal marijuana in California in, I guess it would be effective in about a year and a half. Wow. And um, the last thing, you, you, you're also here, I believe, for a court case? Uh, yeah, again, Dr. Grinspoon and I seem to be connected at the hip on these things, but uh, when I was busted two years ago at the 2007 Boston Freedom Rally with uh, Rick Cusick from High Times Magazine, um, of course we were smoking a joint. We were at the smoke end. What else would we be doing? And we were at the High Times normal booth. But some undercover cops felt obliged to come and bust us. Well, uh, when we got to court, they tried to drop charges, and we said, no, you've arrested us. We have a right to make our case. And we took the stand under oath and testified, of course we were smoking marijuana. That's why we were there. We were protesting the very marijuana laws under which we were subsequently arrested. Um, the, the jury went ahead and convicted us. The judge was very generous. He had no fine, no court costs. He understood. We were honestly raising an intellectual point. Uh, that is now an appeal. It's taken that long to get to the Court of Appeals. Uh, but Steve Epstein and Professor Charles Nesson will be arguing tomorrow in the Court of Appeals. Dr. Grinspoon was our major expert witness, by the way, at trial. And there's a chance. It's always a long chance, but a long shot. But, you know, in Alaska, under their right to privacy provisions, they say uh, it's unconstitutional to criminalize the private possession and use of marijuana. I think it's possible Massachusetts might be the second state to adopt that position. That would be fabulous. Wow. One last thing. I keep saying one last thing. Uh, what do you think about this rally this year, the Freedom Rally? Oh, I, I, it was the best I've seen in a dozen years or so. I mean, I've been coming for, I don't know, 12 or 15 years. And there have been a couple of big ones maybe eight or ten years ago. But the last several years, partly because you had some bad weather one year, and, you know, they, they, you run the risk of that. But the crowd seemed smaller. This year, I thought it was a much bigger crowd. Uh, the mood of the, maybe because of the decriminalization success, people felt freer to come out and exercise their rights. I thought it was the most promising, most exciting, most liberating Boston Freedom Rally I've ever attended. Awesome. Thank you, Keith. Thanks for coming out of Boston. I'll be here next year. Awesome.